Hey everybody, this is Matt Atkinson, and you're watching Four Gettysburg with Aaron Smith. What's going on everyone? Aaron Smith here for Forward Gettysburg, and this is my trip to the Civil War Medicine Museum, a really, really cool museum in downtown Frederick, right on Patrick Street, and this is probably one of my favorite museums that I've ever, ever been to. It's a gorgeous downtown setting, wonderful, wonderful front of the building, and it is just so, so neat inside, so let's check it out together. As Soon as you walk in, you have this display of one of the most popular prosthetics that were used in the late 1800s after the Civil War. Here we are getting into more of the displays here. Now, a really cool thing is they debunked a lot of the Civil War myths like biting the bullet, there was no anesthetics. It was really, really eye-opening to learn about a lot of these things. So they didn't really know about germs back then or, or anything like that. Those theories and, and, and those medical principles haven't been developed. But despite that, they were surprisingly advanced. They weren't just tossing any old guy out onto the front line to perform an amputation or, or do these surgeries. These were very, very well studied and well read individuals. Uh, the city of Philadelphia, there was a uh, display that they had listing all the medical schools at the time and the city of Philadelphia had an overwhelming majority of those medical schools. So it was really interesting to learn about that. So this section here, they talk about what would it take to be recruited as a soldier? How would you, um, what type of things would get you disqualified from, from being a soldier? Uh, here we talk about some of the uh, tallest and shortest soldiers. I thought that was pretty incredible. Seven foot two. And it makes you a big old target on the battlefield. <laughs> This was a cool little display. They had an interactive display where they uh, showed a bunch of different recruiting posters. I thought that was really neat as well. I, I love this kind of stuff. If you've seen my Civil War room, you know I like the recruiting posters. And you know, the recent discussion on vaccines. I had to take a little clip of this. It was pretty interesting. They had them even back then. So now we start to get further down into the museum and they had several of these hallways with just this very excellently painted uh, design. I really, really liked the way these soldiers looked. There was a certain almost comic book aspect to them that I really, really enjoyed. And these were gonna be some of my favorite parts of the Medicine Museum, were these long hallways with these painted displays. And we're gonna see those pop up again as we go through the museum. It was a little bit confusing to have you go down a hallway, turn around, come back up a hallway, but it was a really, really enjoyable experience. Here we have uh, this display. They're talking about different diseases and all the good stuff. Um, oh, you're shot in the arm. You want to do some opium about it? <laughs> uh, things aren't much different today. You know, if I was shot in the arm, I'd certainly wouldn't mind a few, few hits of the opium myself. But we have this really, really cool camp display here. I guess kids are running in the exhibits. And what gets me about this guy is at first I thought it was Governor K. Warren. And I'm like, that's really weird. He was an engineer. But it is a, 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 a Colonel Doctor from the 6th New Jersey, I believe, that sign was showing. But it's just showing camp life. That's the, uh, the surgeon's camp and then the doctor's camp. Really, really neat display. You know, a lot of these Civil War museums, when they use the figurines and the mannequins, they turn out really hokey, but but this one was really good. This was just kind of some, some random snake oil medicines that they had, the patent medicines. And I like that they also discussed the daily life of a soldier as well. I found that really interesting because it was pretty boring. Um, there's a quote on the one thing that said soldier's life is a bore. But here we are talking about John Letterman, a guy with some Gettysburg notoriety, Camp Letterman out there on modern day Route 30, right around the sheets before you get to 15 or after you 
cross over 15 either way, but I thought this was a really, really fascinating display. Here we have an ambulance wagon display, and like I said, there's that awesome artwork and some really, really good model work with the mannequins, or I don't think they're wax. Uh, it was a little bit too warm in there for them to be wax, I guess, but definitely some, some very unique displays here. There's a wounded soldier. Looks like he's having a rough go of it. It's a really, really cool display. And there, there's our boy, Dr. Jonathan Letterman again. And I really liked the interpretive um, pieces that they had here, the plaques and descriptors. It really was interesting. There's Camp Letterman at Gettysburg. Gotta rep Gettysburg, you know. And the other thing I never really considered was veterinary medicine as well. They had a really, really awesome uh, display here. Yes, I, I know my Zoom works as <laughs> a new camera, I'm still figuring it out. But they had a really cool display on veterinary medicine, and there were, you know, tens and tens of thousands of horses, hundreds of thousands of horses used in the war. Uh, this was a little part on Claire Barton, which I found fascinating. And the one museum guide, Bob, uh, he actually had a very, very lengthy discussion with me about Claire Barton, and I learned a lot. And it was just so cool that this guy was volunteering his time and took the time out of his day to discuss Claire Barton with me. It, it was really incredible. So, Bob, if you're listening to the channel and watching this, thank you. Now, this scene here was more of an actual battle out on the battlefield. Um, seeing the doctors and surgeons in the medical corps at work. Oh, that poor gun snapped in half. <laughs> That's what I was looking at after I filmed this. I came back and was checking out that gun. I was like, oh no, <laughs> honey. Just some cool accoutrements and tools that the surgeons had while they were at their field dressing stations you know, to take care of the immediate issues and then send them off to the field hospitals if they needed to go there. Guys, this museum was so cool. And if you're ever in Frederick, Maryland, you need to check out the National Museum of Civil War Medicine. It really, really is just an astounding place to visit. see this is what I thought was was super interesting the mortality rate for being amputated at the hip joint was something like 83 percent some very grisly looking tools bone saws and, and sounders and, and just some pretty intense stuff when it comes to the amputation and it just has to do with the destructiveness of the mini ball and here's the Antietam arm which I think is the highlight of their collection found by a farmer in a field after Antietam, donated to a doctor who preserved it, and then donated to the museum here. And this thing is just super, super spooky. It's so wild, but it's so it was so cool to see. So I, I, I took quite, quite a bit of footage of it. It's just very fascinating. Just really wild. Here's one of those great painted hallways again, this time a, tra a train car filled with wounded soldiers. They did a very, very excellent job with this. Uh, incredible, incredible work. Whoever painted that really has some talent. And now we get to an actual hospital, and here they talk about casualties and the different types of wounds that the men suffered. It is pretty wild. I think I do zoom in on the breakdown up here. Yes, I do. And some of those numbers are just insane. Oh. Makes it, it really drives home what a tragedy the American Civil War was. Here's some more of the doctor's tools, surgeon's tools, bone scraper. I don't want anyone coming near me with anything called a bone scraper. You can keep that stuff. And then coming up here, some of the medicines, and 
This is what I found kind of funny compared to modern day is that a lot of these medicines are, you know, tincture of opium and, and uh, dilaudinum, which is a mixture of opium and alcohol. And I just found it kind of funny, you know, oh, you're feeling bad. Well, let's do some opium about it. <laughs> just kind of cracks me up. But, you know, I don't mean to make light in, 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 in front of the tragedy of the American Civil War. It's just funny comparing it to modern medicine. There's a doctor at work there in his cabinet. There's Governor K. Warren again. Just kidding, that's not actually Governor K. Warren. It just kind of looks like him. But they, they did a really, really awesome job with this display here. There's a cool little model that this guy built and I actually did try to look this up it was torn down so I, I can verify that I'm always looking for a nearby Civil War trip but some prostheses and crutches and I really like this uniform I thought that was cool so I made sure that I caught some footage of that. I just think it's very neat. And here's that display again. A nurse or a nun caring for that wounded soldier. And this was cool. These were some, some utensils that were adapted for use by amputees. And I thought that was very neat. There's another medicine cabinet with all of our fine things. Uh, you know, your prescribed four ounces of powdered rhubarb and uh, and some morphine. Have at it, kiddo. And, and again, it wasn't just Civil War medicine. They did talk about soldier life and what life was like for these men, and I found that part really, really interesting. I thought it was good. This is such an incredibly well-rounded museum that I, I cannot recommend it enough. There's some field kits with different medicines and tools. And then they had a little display about Frederick and how it was, much of the town was used for hospitals during the Antietam campaign. And this, these are some bone fragments that I thought was really, really neat. And there's one coming up of a hip that when I zoomed in on it, you can see how there we go you can see how the body would rebuild the bone around a wound you can see all that new bone growth which i thought was very very cool i'm not usually a fan of the macabre or the dark or like this just for the sake of being macabre but it was really really cool to see how the human body can just heal itself from trauma and here's some dental tools and you know what if the dentist pulls out anything like this, I'm out of there. I'll just, <laughs> I'll suffer in pain. Uh, you're not getting a tooth key around me. And this was a hospital at Frederick. Some keepsakes from that hospital. And then the cool part is that the museum was actually used as a funeral home and a, uh, in a place where they would embalm people, which is fascinating. So this is kind of like a throwback to the history of the building that the museum currently is in. Found it really, really neat. Pretty wild, right there on Patrick Street, the main drag in Frederick. This was kind of a display of the more modern things I thought was kind of cool. Different vaccines that were developed funny story I had a friend in high school whose dad had a prosthesis very much like that he was in the army and he would fill it full of ice in the summer and that's where he would hide his beer <laughs> but some more modern modern tools tourniquets first aid kits and we've really come a long way in terms of medicine and then it ended here with this gentleman's quote-unquote peg leg now I did get out and explore Frederick here we are in the uh, kind of central walk there, running alongside this creek, and I did want to take some footage just because Civil War medicine can be such a heavy subject. 
there's the Maryland State Flower, the Black Eyed Susan. And they did a really, really cool job with this area of downtown Frederick. It was a really neat place to be. People were, folks were out and about doing things. And again, I just thought this was just a very, very gorgeous, gorgeous spot in the city. Almost like something out of a Monet poster or a painting. It was just like a neat stage I found as I was walking around. Now Frederick is the final resting place for Francis Scott Key, so I'm going to end the video here showing you guys Francis Scott Key's tomb, his family tomb. Really cool to come off the beaten path and see these kind of things. And thank you guys so so much for joining me, and I will catch you on the next one.